Hi, I'm Pete Dunlap, and I'm an AWS Solution Architect for Government Subcontractor, blah, 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 blah. Okay, what I'm going to talk about today is decentralized community building via Twilio. This is not, I wish this was a corporate presentation where I was <laughs> selling you something effectively. Um, I have yet to do that, um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about my journey in starting a thing, um, and then why I'm not doing that thing, and why I'm doing a different thing. So, um, what's the big deal? Like, what am I going to talk about? What do I really care about? One of the things that I've been really, really fascinated by for a long time, certainly my entire adult life, is technology and why people are like into technology and what people consider being into technology to me. Because I'm a very late bloomer in terms of technology. I'm a software engineer. That's all I do every day. I work in the cloud, and I hate my smartphone. I think that smartphones are like totally stupid. I think social media is totally stupid. I know I'm just like going out on some limbs here, but anyway, um, that's who I am and that's how I feel. So um, I hope I hope you're vibing. Uh, so what's the big deal? What happened to make us, or excuse me, make me have such strong feelings about technology? Three main things happened. So number one, Google. Right in 1998. They were actually paying people at Yahoo to go to the websites and categorize them based on their content. Right? It was not a good model. They lost. They obviously um, did not do as well as Google. But what Google did is they sorted things based on the number of backlinks. So how many websites link to you. And that is how you rise in the results. At least that's the primary reason that you rise in the results. And I describe that as popularity as truth. It's not perfect because if you are trying to wonder how many feet or in a mile, the common, most popular answer is correct. But if you are wondering if you should vaccinate your children, there are a lot of ideas out there. And the popular ones are not necessarily the ones that everybody else should have, so to speak. And so that's why I say popularity is true. There's a lot of instances of that on the internet. Uh, but that's just the first thing that happened. The second thing that happened is we were taught to understand the internet as a place to entertain yourself. So Facebook is one of the first big successes I guess you could say MySpace, but whatever. Like everyone forgot about MySpace. Um, and uh, that was social media, obviously, and then also gaming. World of Warcraft was a big success early. Uh, and so we sort of taught ourselves, we can think of the internet as a place to enjoy ourselves. And then the last thing, and the reason we all no longer have souls, is because of smartphones, right? At every moment of every day, you could be entertained. In fact, right now, Arguably, there's something on the internet more entertaining than this talk. <laughs> and that's why I say no. that to do anything in 2024, you have to resist being entertained. It's just so compelling all the time. So I think it's a huge deal. I think the way that we interact with technology um, absolutely <coughs> shapes our well-being. It absolutely shapes all kinds of things about our lives. Um, and that's not even assuming that you've used a dating app to like meet people. So, I'm sorry, this doesn't fit. I just didn't have time to make it fit. But what if we are all under-socialized because we are spending so much time on devices? So that is kind of like a key thing that I have wondered and worried about for a long time. What if we are not socially interacting enough in real time to actually live healthy human as we were evolved slash depending on if you're the 46% created to, uh, to actually be? And so that's something that I've thought a lot about, and I created a whole business about this <laughs> that tanked, right? I should, set, I should qualify that. I did make approximately the amount of money that you would make at a regular fast food restaurant for two and a half years of my life. Um, most of what I did was speak at universities, some corporations, and um, the business didn't work because it was like a speaking business and everybody has a thing they want to talk about and I wasn't like special enough. Um, but the thing that I could not forget seeing was this chart right here. And this is a chart from a study from the University of um, Wisconsin-Madison. And this is like 2012, it's very old. But um, they took 68 7 to 12 year old girls and they stressed them out. And when, after they stressed them out, during the recovery period, they offered them different levels of support from their mother. And uh, so you can see some of them got no con contact from mom. Some of them got supportive text messages from mom. Some of them got a uh, mom in person, and some of them got a phone call from mom. And so what I want you to notice, this is their cortisol levels. Basically, texting doesn't help you at all. In fact, arguably, it stresses you out a little bit, because now you have another thing to be stressed about. Whereas a phone call or mom in, and mom in person are basically identical. 
in terms of your, your hormonal response to stress. And the same was true, they have another graph, but I don't want two graphs, um, of your oxytocin levels, which is your love hormone, and that's the reverse. So I, even though my business failed, I was just like, whatever, I've moved on with my life, I can't stop thinking about this graph. And so uh, I, st I tried to st start a startup, I did the Furman Greenville Starts thing, and uh, so I'll tell you a little bit about that product, and then also like why it's a bad idea and I'm not doing it. But then a different thing is what I'm doing now. Uh, so the idea was basically, I can have a peer-to-peer -peer social support tool to help college students combat depression and anxiety through regular phone calls. The idea is basically this wave of mental health problems, as they're often called, are in fact almost always um, depression and anxiety. Like, like when we talk about mental health, we're not talking about schizophrenia most of the time. A lot of time we're really talking about these core issues, depression and anxiety. And so I was like, okay, I'll just make them call each other. And it turns out with Twilio, you can actually do that. And uh, let me show you in a different deck how this flow works. How do I start from the slide I'm on? View, slideshow. Oh yeah, okay. So basically this is the pitch. Um, essentially you have the, the services called LC. It reaches out to person A and um, whose name is Mia for whatever reason. Um, and it says, hey, what are three times when you can talk to your friend? And then, you know, using ChatGPT, it has this whole conversation in case you're like, um, my parents would have a very long conversation about this. Um, I prefer just a single text back with the three times. But you can talk to it as long as you'd like. And then once you give it the three times you can talk to your friend, it texts your friends, and it says, hey, like Mia can talk to you. She wants to have a conversation, have a phone call with you. How do these times work for you? And then you say, okay, I can do the, the Friday one. And then um, it confirms for both of you. And so this is uh, like basically powered by Twilio. So Twilio sends the text back and forth. And then it's also using ChatGPT's API to like have this conversation, basically. You say ChatGPT, talk to them until they like figure their junk out and give me these four times or three times. And then you say, hey, talk to them until they pick one of these. So if you say, like, I'll talk on Saturday, and Saturday wasn't there, it will be like, no, like, that's not a choice. And it will keep going until you, until you answer the question. So then, when the, when the time comes to have the call, both of your phones ring, it can actually create a phone call between two people. And the other thing that I think is so fancy, and I was like so hyped about, is it will actually put their own, um, that they're calling each other. Like, it doesn't come from a different phone number. And um, that's using um, something called um, that's using something called verified caller IDs. Um, and so I wanted to show you real quick, like how this actually works. Uh, and like this is a demo, so you know what to expect. <laughs> Who knows? Um, so I'll just put in a phone number for. My Google phone number. Okay. And this is my Google Voice phone number, and then I'll put in my real phone number. Oh, geez, this is going to yeah. be YouTube. Now I recognize <laughs> my phone number. <laughs> okay. So, uh, what it does is it uses, um, I'm using like serverless functions, um, running Python, just running the, the Bodo, or sorry, not Bodo. Um, the Twilio API to generate these text messages, and in theory, yes, okay, you get a text, um, let me make it study way bigger, and so this just tells you like, hey, this is the demo, like this is what it's going to do, it's going to verify your phone, um, and this is this only hap has to happen once, and then that allows me to pretend I'm you when I call the people to make a call, and it's going to call in three seconds. You all don't believe me. <laughs> you don't. You have so little faith. It's totally gonna work. Unless it doesn't. <laughs> okay, it's working. Those cosmic rays, man. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to go into normal mode for just a moment. So I answer the call. It texts me a verification code. This process is terrible. I've already talked to Twilio about it. They agree and are willing to do nothing about it. <laughs> They're very polite. Though. 
and re-explained over and over what the regular documentation says. So now I'm like set up in the system so I can now create calls. And I've already got my personal phone on that. And so in just a couple seconds, it's going to text this person, googly doogly. And it says, can you have three times when you would, you would talk to Pete? Um, yes, tomorrow afternoon at three and four and Tuesday at 7 p.m. And I misspelled Tuesday even. This is just, I'm just like acting like I invented ChatGPT right now. It's gonna, work. it's gonna understand. Um, and so what it does is then it will text me here and then it will generate the call. But I'm running out of time, so I'm gonna just accelerate and be like, y'all will believe that this actually works because I only have four minutes and 10 seconds. So what's gonna happen now is I'm getting texts here. I'm not gonna reply because otherwise then it's gonna start the call in the rest of my slides. So um, just to show you a little bit of that code, what it looks like, I have a, a this is a SAM enabled template for um, infrastructure as code through AWS CloudFormation. So you just, a little bit of configuration and you have an API. And then each of your lambdas, sorry, those are the tables where the data is stored. Um, each of your endpoints has like a little bit of config, a little bit of permissions, what it can talk to. And then you, in a pretty straightforward way, can set up, um, if you've ever experienced Lambda, this is gonna look very boring, but you got your Lambda handler that shoots in your event with the data that comes in via an API or whatever else is happening. And then you just, you have your business logic. And so that's how it creates um, this interaction. I created kind of like a services model, if you're familiar with um, uh, best practice, uh, what are they called, design patterns for Python. So, you know, basically the routine, if it's a, if it's a find a time routine, it uses that. And then if it's a confirm your time routine, it uses that. It eventually arrives at the time. And then the last fun bit is the call. And this is going to lead right into like why this is a bad idea. <laughs> now I've convinced you it's an amazing idea. Like half of you are about to invest. Um, the reason it's a bad idea is because a lot of things can go wrong creating a phone call between two people. Um, for example, you can go to voicemail on someone's. Like how do you detect that? It's like Twilio's like, we'll sell you that but it doesn't work that well. Um, what if someone just accidentally hangs up? Like, how do you get back a hold of them? There's a lot of things that can go wrong. And the last thing that's terrible about it is it's kind of expensive. It's like between four and six cents a minute for a call. And part of the reason I decided like, oh, we should sell this to colleges is because it was so expensive. Um, and they would probably have enough money to pay this or something like this. Um, but as someone I spoke to earlier, a very young person said to me, that a phone call, it feels like a YouTube video I have to pay attention to. <laughs> so there are a number of reasons this is a very bad idea. Um, but uh, the long and short of it is, like, no one I offered to sell it to was interested in buying it. And uh, young people don't like phone calls. So there was a big problem there. So I have a new idea. So here's the new idea in, uh, in like two minutes or less. So assuming I even remember to socialize, this is what happens when I go to socialize. So this is a real conversation. I just screenshot it to my friend Otto. I said, hey, I'm free. Are you free for something tomorrow evening? I should be available for a few hours. And he says, yes, what were you thinking? And then I replied back. Mind you, I was interrupted again. You know. um, I said, I could do beers at Fireforge or Tetrad or anywhere. I mean, very flexible at this point. Or I could hit golf balls at a range or play part three or watch a movie or anything else you can think of. Like, I did not even do this for this talk. This is just like how I talk. Um, and then he says, let's do Fireforge. Um, golf sounds nice, but it's too cold and windy for me. This was in January, just so you know. Um, I said, perfect, what time works for you? Um, are you planning to go direct after work? I don't have work today. So I could be there at like 5 or 6 or 7 or 8. <laughs> like, this is, like, this is as if I made it for this budget. Um, and then he says, let's do 7 so I can help with bed, bath and bedtime. And then, after seven, he's still texting me, right? He texts me, he says, sorry, I couldn't find any parking, I'm on my way. Okay, so there's so many interruptions and interactions based on this, like, garbage. Like, I don't even, I like Otto. I will go and do anything with Otto anytime as long as I'm available. And so basically, the new idea is a minimalist social moment creator. 
um, that is not a good name for a product, so I'll be um, talking to people who think of names better than me. But essentially, it could be this. So you just like add in your schedule, your general lines of availability. Your friends do that also, and um, then there's information about places to go in Greenville. And so it just like asks you based on your mutual availability. It says, "Can you meet Pete Dunlap at Fireforge tomorrow at 7 p.m.?" And then Otto says yes. And then it says, "Cool, let me confirm that." And then it asks me, "Otto wants to meet you at Fireforge at 7 p.m. Does that work?" Yes. Okay, it's on. Right? So basically, like, it's a minimalist thing to keep you socially interacting is the uh, premise. And that's the end. I was going to show you a little bit of code, but I'm over time. Thank you.